Hey, I excuse me. You, over there, with the, um, with the, the shirt on. Me? Yes, you. Have you heard about the critically acclaimed MMO- Yes. That's, that's a little bit rude. What is? You, you didn't even know what I was going to say, and you just proceeded to completely cut me off. You were going to ask me if I had heard of the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV with an expanded free trial, which you can play through the entirety of A Realm Reborn and the award-winning Stormblood expansion up to level 70 for free with no restrictions on playtime. No. Then what? Did you know that Final Fantasy XIV has an expansion? Okay, you know what? I'm leaving. No, wait, 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 please don't go. Have you ever played Final Fantasy XIV? Yes. Oh, then what do you think of it? It's a really good game. Is this the only MMO that you play? Actually, I surprisingly play a few different MMOs. Really? Do you care to elaborate on what those other MMOs are? I mean, not particularly. Please. <sighs> Will you leave me alone if I do? Yes? <sighs> Fine. I've played a lot of MMORPGs. I feel like I've played every single MMORPG that has ever released. The vast majority of them admittedly have not been very good. Nevertheless, there are a select few that I continue to log into every single month. These are games that are, in my opinion at least, subjectively a lot better, a lot higher quality, a lot more fun, but I felt now since it's the beginning of 2024, is the ideal time to go over the MMORPGs that I genuinely play. Starting with Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV is a pay-to-play, one of the very few pay-to-play MMORPGs currently available online. This is arguably one of the highest quality MMOs that you will find. It utilizes a tab target combat system, has beautiful graphics, Although they are looking a little bit dated as of 2024, the story is... Admittedly, I wasn't the biggest fan of Endwalker. I thought it was a significant decrease in terms of quality over Shadowbringers. Shadowbringers was, I think, the pinnacle of the game. I think it is going to be impossible for Final Fantasy XIV to top Shadowbringers. The story overall, though, is an absolute treat. Players will tell you that the story in this game is one that you cannot skip. And if you do, you'll never hear the end of it. Even though at times the story is a little bit convoluted. The world is beautiful. There's a lot to see. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to explore. The game is partially voice acted. There are new expansions that come out every two years. There are new patches that come out every X amount of months. There is an incredibly competitive PvE scene with arguably some of the most difficult PvE raids that you'll find. I haven't really delved very deeply into the PvP because it's something that I've never really enjoyed in Final Fantasy XIV. The class system, the job system is quite extensive. You can level every single class on a single character, which means there's no need for additional or alternate characters, which is a stark contrast to the next MMO on this list, World of Warcraft, which just so happens to also be a pay-to-play MMO, I think the only other pay-to-play MMORPG available right now online. I know there are a couple others that are looking to be pay-to-play. PAX Day is going to be pay-to-play. Ashes of Creation is going to be pay-to-play, which means that there is going to be a subscription fee that you need to pay monthly. But World of Warcraft is essentially Final Fantasy XIV, but a more cartoon version of it. Like, and it's not necessarily even a cartoonified version. It's just a completely different graphical style that will appeal to a certain demographic of players while will also not appeal to, to players on the uh, opposite side of the spectrum that prefer more anime or more Eastern inspired characters like Final Fantasy XIV, like PSO2. World of Warcraft is a completely open world MMO, just like Final Fantasy XIV. Although Final Fantasy XIV has segregated zones, World of Warcraft doesn't. You have entire continents that are traversable without loading screens, but to travel between them, there is a loading screen that you need to navigate between. This game has the largest population in an MMO, 
This is partially due to the fact that there is World of Warcraft, the live server. There is World of Warcraft Classic. There are multiple different versions of WoW that coexist alongside one another that all use the same subscription. Therefore, they continue to bolster the cumulative total number of players, allowing for WoW to achieve numbers that no other MMO can. This is a tab target MMO, much like Final Fantasy XIV, but where Final Fantasy XIV is perceived by a lot of players to be very slow, World of Warcraft is the exact opposite. WoW has very fast tab target combat. WoW, along with probably Arcage and Ion, has some, if not the best tab target combat you will find in an MMO. There is no greater MMO than WoW when it comes to combat. Not just combat. The world is beautiful. There is a ton to explore. There is more to explore in World of Warcraft than in any other MMO that I have played a large amount of. You can wander around the world and happen across toys that have a, a number of different effects. You can find transmog, you can find gear, you can find pets, you can find just random quests. There, There is just more content to consume, more content to just actively search out that isn't necessarily just the main story or that just doesn't just push you from point A to point B for the sake of pushing through the the main scenario just to get to the next area. There, you are actually physically rewarded for exploring and taking the time to find new things. That is something that I genuinely think sets WoW apart from its competition. This is one of the reasons that I always end up going back to it. Whenever there's a new patch, because I love exploring everything the game world has to offer, and that it has what is arguably the best PvP system in a tab target MMO. The open world PvP, the instanced battlegrounds, the instanced arenas. This game has one of the, okay, I'm not gonna say one of the most competitive PvP scenes it used to, but it still has a fairly competitive PvP scene, a very competitive PvE scene with the world first that happen. The raids and dungeons in this game are probably some of the best that I've come across. Now, Final Fantasy XIV has a very different type of raid system present, whereas WoW's, I think, is is difficult in a different way. And more than that, I think WoW's dungeons are some of the most fun that I've ever played through because there are so many things that you can do to speed up or slow down or avoid entire packs of monsters to go around and find routes that you didn't even know existed the first time. This allows for the dungeoning experience and even the raiding experience to not just be a straight linear path. Now, before we talk about any additional MMOs, I wanna take a moment here to thank our incredible patrons over on Patreon who allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are absolutely <laughs> incredible and I cannot thank you all enough for the support. Now let's keep talking about MMOs. Another MMO that is very much like this is the Elder Scrolls Online. The Elder Scrolls Online utilizes segregated zones, much like Final Fantasy XIV, but there's also a lot to do out in the world. You can find quests out there, you can find NPCs out there that just have the most random quests. The entire game is voice acted. There are individual zone-wide quests that happen, while also featuring characters from other zones that continue to be a an ever-present force in the story, the overall overarching narrative. Combat in the Elder Scrolls Online, and I I, <laughs> I I know this is gonna upset some people because whenever I say this, it upsets some people, but the Elder Scrolls Online, while it does have an action combat system, also suffers from having a very slow, very clunky action combat system because you need to use animation canceling and I'm just not very good at that. Now, the Elder Scrolls Online also has a lot of competitive PvE and a lot of competitive PvP. PvP in the form of like the uh, the Siege Wars, PvE in the form of dungeons, raids, and more than that, the public dungeons that are available, which allows for you to enter already pre-existing dungeons that other players are doing and have other players join in your dungeon that you're doing to help you without even necessarily being in your party. This promotes a, a, a style of community interaction and participation that isn't present in other MMOs and I think is one of the standout features of the Elder Scrolls Online. The world in ESO is very beautiful. 
The character models are pretty good. They're admittedly not on the same level as Skyrim. They're, I think, a little more toned down, a little easier in terms of performance and optimization. Overall, I've been playing a lot of The Elder Scrolls Online in the last few months, and that's mainly because I've really enjoyed the Necrom expansion, a game that never really has real expansions, but just continues to add on additional content piece by piece is Black Desert Online. This is the MMO that has retained the title of the best looking MMORPG for the last four, six, seven years, however long BDO has, has been available globally for. Now I will note real quick, The Elder Scrolls Online is buy to play. It's not free to play, it's not pay to play. Black Desert Online is also buy to play, which means they both have a set box price, but you don't need to pay an additional monthly subscription to play them. Black Desert Online has the only world that allows for seamless traversal without loading screens. The game is completely open world. You'll encounter tons of players out just doing stuff, life skilling, grinding, and that's pretty much it. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest, there, there's a lot of stuff to do in Black Desert Online, but at the same time, it feels like there's not really much to do in Black Desert Online, at least in terms of variety. Okay, I've put in probably like 3,000 hours into Black Desert Online over the last, I don't know, six years. I always go back because every, I don't know, six, eight months, they release a new class. And the new class is just so much fun to play. It's beautiful, it's, it's combat style is original. The characters look even better. The animations look even better. The special effects look even better. Like every class is an upgrade over every class that came before it. And they know that players are gonna continue to come back to try these out because the new classes are, or at least tend to typically be fairly innovative in what they offer. Like I remember coming back and playing the mermaid class that like surfed around on waves and shit. The classes in this game are unlike the classes you will find in any other MMO. Now, this game also has the best character creator in the genre. It has the best graphics in the genre. It has the best action combat in the genre. It has better almost everything than you will find that in, in any other MMO, with one of the few exceptions being the story, which is fairly incomparable to Final Fantasy XIV, to World of Warcraft, and even WoW's story isn't that good, and The Elder Scrolls Online, which just, quick segue, The Elder Scrolls Online has a very good narrative. Another game with an interesting narrative is Waven. Now, Waven is probably an MMO you haven't heard of, and that's because it's not technically in the same vein of MMO as Final Fantasy XIV, ESO, BDO, or WoW. It is an MMO, but at the same time, it is typically played either by yourself or with a few other players. Now, you will see hundreds of people out in the world. When I played through this recently, I saw probably a, a grand total of four to 600 people over the course of just a couple day period. They were all talking, they were all engaging enemies, they were all grinding, completing quests. It was a lot of fun. It was something that I hadn't seen done in a little while. Typically when I play MMOs, even MMOs that are generally played together with other people, everyone is doing everything on their own anyway. No one's really interacting. This is an MMO that is typically played by yourself, but also had people interacting and doing stuff. Like it was just, it was a very weird culture shock. Games that are built to be played together aren't, and games that aren't built to be played together are. <laughs> now, Waven is a turn-based, grid-based MMO where you deploy your character onto a grid-based field and summon one of numerous different characters to aid you in battle against the enemies, to complete quests, to level up, to recruit new enemies, or not enemies, allies, additional units for you to deploy. It utilizes segregated zones. There are a lot of zones to visit and to explore. The game is very, very difficult. It is very challenging. There is a functional PVP system. There is a lot of PVE. This is the game that I think is unlike any other, really. Like. Of all the games included in this video, this is the one that truly stands out to me. And that is because all the other MMOs are the same thing. This game isn't. Now this game isn't necessarily gonna to appeal to everyone, but it is free to play. It is available on Steam right now. And it is also cross-platform. Those games 
completely suck. Final Fantasy XIV is by far the best MMO. <sighs> Why do I even bother? <laughs>